How do function calls work? What happens when we call a function and when a function returns? Calling functions is easy. It just makes a different piece of code start to execute. It's the returning that's hard. The computation must somehow remember what it was previously doing and restore that accurately. Consider the following program. Suppose we run the expression f of 1. By the rules of substitution we learned in school, this evaluates to an answer as follows. You might want to pause and make sure you follow everything on the screen before you continue. That's a nice and simple way to explain what happens, but in most implementations, that's not exactly what happens. Instead, the implementation uses a data structure that keeps track of what work remains to be done. Observe that the most recent function call to begin is the first to finish, so this is a last-in, first-out data structure, in other words, a stack. This is the same sort of stack you learned about in a data structures class, except this one is automatically and transparently maintained for you by the language implementation. What we'll now see is a high-level explanation of how the stack works. There are two parts to the stack's operation. What happens when we call a function and what happens when we enter a function? These two sound like they go together, but there's a reason why we're going to treat them separately. When we enter a function, we record the values of its local variables. Our example is purposely simple. The only local variables are function parameters. We have, however, intentionally named them all the same to see how that plays out in practice. So at each function entry, we create a mapping from the local variables to their values. We call this record the environment. When we call a function, we keep track of what's waiting to be done in this function after that call finishes. Then we can run the function. This creates the local environment, then begins to evaluate the body. When that body finishes, we use our record of what's waiting to be done to figure out what to do next. Let's make this very concrete using the program above. Let's say we've just begun to run f. The first thing we do is create an environment record that says that f's x has the value 1. We usually say that x is bound to 1. Now we start to run f's body. This tells us to first add 2 to x, giving 3. This result we must pass to g. Because we're making a call, we have to keep track of what is left of f. That's to add x to the result. We'll use the solid circle, called a hole, to record where the answer goes. Now we evaluate g's body. This consists of a multiplication in the two calls to h. Going left to right, the first thing to do is evaluate x plus 4, which gives us 7. We now pass this result to h. This means we keep track of the remaining work, then bind h as x to 7, then evaluate its body. This produces 10. Now we see how a return works. Returning removes the environment binding and resumes evaluation in the previous function by replacing the hold with a returned answer. In this case, we figured out that the first sub-expression of the multiplication evaluates to 10. Now we're ready to evaluate the second sub-expression. Because this is another function call, we again keep track of what's left to do, make an environment binding, and evaluate the body. This produces 6. So what do we know in G? The first sub-expression produced 10, and the second produced 6. The third is x, which when we know from the environment is 3. Multiplying all these gives us 180 and finishes the evaluation of g. We can therefore return this as the value to f. This plugs 180 into the whole, adds 1, and gives 181. This is now the result from f. We've intentionally been a bit coy about what's at the very bottom. The bottom is the REPL, the read eval print loop. This reads our expression f of 1 and evaluates it. 
evaluation has produced the result 181. It now prints this and loops, showing a new prompt and waiting for our new expression.